everyone. This is Denise Hansard, your life architect, and welcome to What's Next. There are many times in our lives when we have that moment, whether we're 35 or 65, where the question comes up of what's next. It can be a very curious question of saying, well, I've done all of that, so what's next now? And what I find is that for a lot of women, the what's next question has a little bit of a little fear. And that's what this program is going to be about. Speaking with women on what's next in their life, helping them to view it from a different perspective, and helping you to see that if someone else can do it, so can you. Hello, Here's... everyone. This is Denise Hansard, your life architect, and we're back with what's next for you and for Gigi. Gigi is our guest again. And Gigi, thank you so much for doing these episodes with me. I find it um, very enlightening. And of course, I love everything that you do. Uh, VerySmartIdeas.com. Don't forget, guys. And I'll put it down in the description and how you all can reach Gigi and find out what she's doing in her lifestyle work. And let's go even further, Gigi. We've talked about a lot of different things, but now let's dive down into what were you afraid of in starting something like this? Because fear, like we talked about, give me one second so you can think about that. Um, fear is always going to be with us, guys. It's just a matter of how we deal with our fear. But what were you afraid of? What fears came up for you, Gigi? Oh, I was afraid of everything. <laughs> Afraid of, to be perfectly frank, afraid of, uh, you know, the big one, failure. Well, what does failure mean? If I'm not doing it, then how do I know if I'm going to fail or not? And that's what I kept telling myself. And the other thing about failure, fear, failure, because to me, they're so, so combined, mm -hmm. is, and I, I read this somewhere, shoot, I can't remember where I read it, but it just so resonated and maybe it'll resonate with you and your audience. And that is... When we made a, a Air Bunny's mistake or we went the wrong way or something didn't work, mm -hmm. it's yep. not that we did it wrong. It's not that we failed. It's just that that's the universe saying, hey, don't go that way. You need to go this way. Or or maybe we were supposed to go that way to learn and to grow yeah. and to see it differently. So you could choose the other direction. Yeah, I think it's both or actually probably a combination of the two. Yeah. But by by me thinking, oh, gosh, you know, that's you need to go the other way now. That made it a lot easier for me to um, think about failure or thinking about time, because, you know, we're only put on this earth for a short amount of time. And I'm always thinking, oh, my gosh, this isn't happening fast enough for me why is this not happening fast enough for me? Why, you know, why do I only have 20,000 followers? Why am I not here? Because I am very, very impatient. Um, but that really has helped me with my fear because every day um, I combat some form of fear, fear um, on YouTube. I just started with YouTube and one of the very first videos I put up, I was very vulnerable and um, it was about using my hand to do something. And the, some of the comments I got were just appalling. Like I had to do everything to not cry, to, um, to answer these people back with love, which is what I did. Wow. And um, I thought, wow, okay, you know what? Mm -mm. These bullies are not going to stop me. I'm not going to be fearful for them mm. because they need, huge amounts of therapy and or love. Um, so that would be one example, but um, I yeah, am I wanna, constantly- I wanna, yeah, I wanna insert something right there because I yeah, yeah, love, please. love love and this addresses that and you did it very well. Eleanor Roosevelt has probably paraphrasing what she said, but this is a quote that always stays in my mind is no amount of water can drown you unless you let it in. And that's exactly what you did by, number one, don't be a bully out there, people. Come on, don't be a bully, you know? But you 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 didn't allow their 
their own fear, which is basically what it was, to absorb within you and stop you. And you address right. it in a way with love and compassion. So thank you for doing that. So yes, that's beautiful. Well, it, it's thank you. It's my pleasure. I mean, for me, one in 1900 babies are born with some type of limb difference. Mm -hmm. And the only difference between having a limb difference and maybe having um, um, a mental health issue or challenge is that you see it. Yes. And um, to me, I want our children to grow up seeing this as normal. I want um, more handicap um, representation on television. I want people to be able to see somebody walking down the street and not be like, oh, wow, her hand looks weird. Or, yeah. oh my gosh, does that hurt? Or I'm going to pray that God lets it grow back. That was my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I'm laughing. No, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry I'm laughing. I mean, uh, that was her belief. Yeah. Bless her. Yes. Um, but fear, um, fear is always going to be there. And, and for me, the truth behind fear is that's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's all just something that I need to learn about yep. and take a step over it every time that comes up. And I think part of that's also my ego saying, you can't do this. Well, well, well I can, the universe is telling me I can. Yeah. There's too many examples of you doing it. And if I may add on to that with you, um, stepping over fear, Sometimes I believe we go through fear and embrace fear and dance with fear to make it part of ourselves so that it doesn't stop us. It motivates us forward. And that's where I think another episode, you said you have grit. And I know that mm -hmm. that is really, really what it is, is knowing that there's no evidence of the fear stopping you. You have evidence that you are doing this with everything. Um, and well I love said. That. yeah, I love the way that you put that. So I'm going to ask you a different question. Do you have any fear of success and how this might change your life? You know, that's interesting. Um, these are all interesting questions, by the way. <laughs> For me, um, I have thought about that. I am I am quite blessed. I work quite hard to have a, um, a very successful wealth management practice. Mm -hmm. And so it's not the, the money. I say that, but it's not the money. It's not um, what's going to happen in my life. I, I, gosh, I don't know how to even explain it. I've given a lot of thought to this question. And I think the Truly, the answer is I'm just waiting to, I'm just going to see what the universe gives me. What happens with it? In terms of changing my life, I'm so blessed to have an incredible husband and my children are grown. My baby's 19. Um, he's almost grown. Um, and I, I, I think that it's all going to be okay. Yeah. I just, I just get this feeling after thinking it through that it's all just going to be okay. Yeah, I love that. And here's how I would put it. You know, if you and I were coaching together, what I would do with reinforce where you are in this step and in this stage, because you have become curious and you have created that essence of being present in this moment. Because if you really were afraid of, like we talked about, not having evidence of, you know, not doing it, that's kind of looking to the past and we have hindsight and it's never going to get us anywhere. And then if we fear <laughs> the success of what is moving forward, that's foresight, which is not where you want to go, because that's like futurizing is what I call it. And we can't, we can have <laughs> our dreams and we can look at what's potential out there in the land of possibilities. But where we want to be is right in that present moment of the insight of what we have right at this moment yeah. and accept that there's more to come and that you will be ready as the universe delivers it to you. Yeah. And that's yeah, what I, yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Every night um, I journal before I go to bed, mm -hmm. it's part gratitude and it's part begging for stuff <laughs> so I <laughs> so, 
We're going to shift that. We're going to change so that aspect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that I, of course that's in jest, but every night I do um, thank the universe for what I have. And I also always ask for guidance. Yes. I always ask for guidance and whether it comes to me as we've talked about in the past in a dream or it comes to me as a very smart idea, it just, they just kind of land, land in my lap mm -hmm. and I go from there and knowing that this has happened so many times, so many times also helps abate the fear. Yes. Yes. Like, no, it's going to be okay. I'm going to move forward. Yeah. And I like the way you put it before it's about you step, you, you step into it. And then, of course, guys, we're, we're conditioned. We are humanly conditioned to have the thoughts of not enoughness. There is no way of getting around that except by acknowledging that we have it, period. That's just it. But yeah. once you stay present in it and, again, ask the questions and get curious about it and say, is this really true? And you begin looking at where it's not true for you on what you've done. Wow, I've got an Instagram channel and I have X number of followers and I have X number of people that are saying, yay, that's great, we love you. Or I did the YouTube video, I put it out there, I stepped into it, or I've learned HTML, hey. you know, everything like that. What, and, and it goes even beyond very smart ideas for you. Where in your life and in your career of the 30 years as a financial advisor, did you wanna stop and just give up? And say, I can't do this. And yet. As a financial advisor? Yeah. And yet you didn't. You oh, did. Right, yeah. right. Well, I was a single mom and I was working 80 hours. I would bring my son, Adam, in, in the car seat carrier, put him on my desk on the weekends. When he would sleep, <clears throat> I would work. And um, then I'd go home. <clears throat> and do it all over again because I I couldn't afford babysitters back then. Yeah. So I I guess I just that goes back to grit. It does. And I have it now, and and that's why something keeps saying to me, Gigi, you need to really work on very smart ideas. So I do that, you know, as mentioned, um, in the morning in my PJs. I do a lot of videos in my PJs, and it's people just it. it cracks me up. <laughs> So, keeps you real, honey. I just, I just work to make it happen. Keeps yeah. me real. <laughs> and that's what it's about, guys. So anything else in this episode that you want to tell anybody about? Or again, all of her info is going to be down in the description. Um, yeah, I, um, I, I guess I just want to say that the one thing that I'm really working on is this month, this coming month, April is Limb Difference Awareness Month. And I'll be doing videos, um, <clears throat> many videos about limb difference as well as cooking and, and gardening and seeds and all of that. Um, so if you know of anybody who could use this information or would like to learn about how to work with limb difference, please have them follow me um, on Instagram um, at Very Smart Ideas. And I think the other thing that I'd like to let people know is the one thing that I'm working very hard on and actually working on a TED Talk as well is um, why isn't, why aren't physical handicaps considered or um, positioned in diversity programs? We have black, we have white, we have women. Even some of the largest, largest companies out there don't consider a handicap part of their diversity, pro their inclusion and diversity. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that there are a couple of other women out there who've done some great work. Um, uh, one woman did a TED talk recently, Ruth um, Rothblatt. And this is something that's near and dear to my heart is bringing awareness too. So if you're watching this and you're an executive or you're part of an inclusion and diversity uh, committee, please consider including um, uh, mental and physical handicap as one of the categories. And on that note, because that's the greatest note to end on, is we want to bring awareness to everything in life. Gigi, thank you for today's episode, and I'm sure we'll be talking to you even more so. But everybody, think about it like this. Your fear can be your motivator. So whatever it is that you're stepping into in this next phase of life on your what's next, remember, no amount of water can drown you unless you let it in. So oh, 
Thank you, Gigi. Everybody like, share, subscribe, send this out to the world because it's got some beautiful messages in it. So thank you, Denise. Thanks. See you later.